Taking the good with the bad, the drop in inflation is a double-edged sword. The good news side is what's driving this reduction in inflation is a reduction in gasoline prices. So if you're filling up with gasoline today, it's at a much lower price than it was a year ago. That's good news. The downside is that if you're on a variable rate mortgage, or if you have debt that has an interest rate that varies with market conditions, those interest costs are going up. Statistics Canada saying rising mortgage costs tied to higher interest rates were once again the largest contributor to rising household costs. The mortgage cost index rising a whopping 29.9%, a new record high increase for the third consecutive month. Average Canadians are getting hit twice. They're getting hit uh, by the fact that prices are rising and they're rising much faster than wages uh, for most workers. So their real purchasing power has shrunk. But now they're getting hit as well because they got to find a few hundred extra dollars a month to send to the bank once they've renegotiated their mortgage. With energy prices down 12.4% year over year in May, mostly due to global factors, StatsCan says inflation hit 3.4% in May, less than half of the 8% peak last July, and the first time it's been lower than 4% since summer of 2021. But the much desired drop in food prices has yet to materialize. Statistics Canada saying grocery prices are up 9% annually, showing little improvement from April. Food, of course, is still going up. Rents are going crazy. And many other expenses that Canadians have to pay uh, are still growing rapidly. So uh, the, the problem is easing, but we're not out of the woods yet. Economists at RBC expect the growth of food prices to slow the rest of the year. There kind of as well the lagged impact of uh, uh, some of the improvement we've seen in global supply chains and, and lower, lower agricultural commodity prices flow through to retail prices. The Bank of Canada is determined to get inflation to 2%, something it has pursued with a series of interest rate hikes, gearing up for its next interest rate decision on July 12th after raising the overnight interest rate a quarter percentage point to 4.75% earlier this month. You know, we, we do think it's, it's likely still that they'll, they'll hike rates again in July. It's just we uh, think we haven't seen enough slowing in, in the inflation data yet uh, to where that would prevent them uh, from hiking. Right, I think Canadians uh, should prepare themselves for uh, some more of this painful medicine. The big question is whether in fact it pushes Canada's overall economy into a recession. Um, again, uh, hard to read the crystal ball, but there's a lot of worrisome signs in terms of uh, consumer spending uh, and confidence and some of the other uh, macroeconomic factors. So uh, if we top all this pain off with a recession uh, in a few months time, uh, then Canadians are, are, are really going to be pulling their hair up.